presents The Snowman, the book of the classic film, based on the story by Raymond Briggs, read by Matthew McFadden. The snow fell all night long. When James woke up, he couldn't believe his eyes. He leapt out of bed and rushed to the window. Outside, the world had turned a brilliant, glistening white. Quickly, he tugged on his clothes and ran downstairs. Don't forget your boots, Mum said. James had never seen so much snow. He played for hours, stamping up and down the path. Then he started to roll a snowball, and it got bigger and bigger. Soon it was so big that it gave James a brilliant idea. He would make a snowman. Carefully, he built the body, then rolled another ball for the head. James ran inside and found a tangerine for the nose, two pieces of coal for eyes, an old green hat and a matching scarf. Last of all, James gave his snowman a great big smile. He was perfect. Time for dinner, Dad called. All evening, James sat by the window so that he could gaze at his wonderful snowman. He would have stayed there all night, but it was soon time for bed. As he brushed his teeth, James took one last look at his snowman. He snuggled down in bed. I hope he's still there in the morning, he thought, and he drifted off to sleep. In the middle of the night, James woke up, and he remembered his snowman. He crept downstairs. As he looked out at his snowman, the most magical thing happened. The snowman came to life. James shook the snowman's hand. Come in, he said. I'll show you around. In here, whispered James, opening the living room door. The snowman loved the Christmas tree, but thought the fire was too hot. So James took him to the fridge to cool down. Then they explored the rest of the house and even tiptoed into Mum and Dad's room and tried on Dad's clothes. Perhaps we'd better go back outside, said James. When they reached the garden, the snowman grabbed James's hand and started to run faster and faster until they were flying. From all around, they were joined by flying snowmen. Together they flew over the city, out to sea, and on and on. Until, at last, they landed at the North Pole. The snowman led James through the trees towards a clearing. James couldn't believe his eyes. A large circle of snowmen were gathered, and in the middle there was Father Christmas. Just in time, smiled Father Christmas. The party is about to start. And what a party it was. James and the snowman danced all night long. As the first rays of sunlight appeared over the hills, Father Christmas handed James a parcel. For me, James gasped. It was a soft blue scarf, beautifully decorated with snowmen. Oh! Thank you, cried James. He gave Father Christmas a big hug, and then it was time to go. James and the snowman soared into the air and flew towards home. When they arrived, it was nearly morning, and time for James to go back to bed. James didn't want to leave his friend, but he knew it was time to say goodbye. With one last look at the snowman, James went inside and upstairs to bed. Happy and exhausted, he fell asleep. In the morning, 
James's first thought was of the snowman. He jumped out of bed and raced down the stairs, past mum and dad, out of the door and into the garden. But the snowman had gone. This audiobook was produced and published by Penguin Books Limited. The Snowman and the Snow Dog based on the characters created by Raymond Briggs and the story written by Hilary Ordis and Joanna Harrison. Come on, called Billy to his old dog. We're here. Let's explore our new home. But Billy's dog was too old and tired for exploring. As the months passed, he became slower and slower. And then one day he died. Together, Billy and his mum buried him in the garden. Winter came. Billy was lonely. He missed his old friend. He had written a letter to Father Christmas and was about to take it downstairs when he tripped over a loose floorboard. What's this? thought Billy as he pulled out an old shoebox. Inside he found a worn out hat, some pieces of coal, a shriveled tangerine and a tatty green scarf. As Billy unfolded the scarf, an old photograph dropped out and then he realized another boy had lived here and made an amazing snowman I'm going to make a snowman too thought Billy just like his one he took the box and ran outside and began to build his own snowman he used two pieces of coal for the eyes and a new tangerine for the nose. And last of all, he gave him a great big smile. His snowman was perfect. But there was still plenty of snow left. Billy had an idea. He started building again, and bit by bit, with two socks for ears, he made a snow dog. Now it was late. Billy said good night to his two new friends and went inside to bed. At midnight, Billy was woken by a muffled bark. He peered out of the window and rubbed his eyes in disbelief. Did the snow dog move? He ran downstairs and flung open the back door. And then the most magical thing happened. The snowman and the snow dog came to life. The snowman politely shook his hand and the snow dog bounded up to say hello. Then he was off up the garden where he found the old dog's ball. He wanted to play, but the snowman had found something too. It was a sledge. Billy climbed on board. Out through the gate they went, towards the path and up the hill. When they reached the top, Billy gasped in amazement. The air was full of flying snowmen rising up from the gardens below. What a magical sight. Suddenly, the snowman took Billy's hand and started to run. Billy grabbed the snow dog, and before he knew it, 
they were flying. 